My name is Amir Zaberi, and I'm a scientist at the Jackson Laboratory, still with specific responsibilities in leading the rare and orphan disease mouse model development portfolio. So I work as part of a team at JAX. Um, so uh, we interact with um, in vivo pharmacology researchers that are then taking these models and researching them. It was, uh, we were setting up the Rare and Orphan Disease Center, and it's been in operation for about five years ago. Um, and a lot of our initial contacts were directly with patient foundations calling us. In this case, with SETBP1, uh, you contacted us along with Wendy Chung, who we had worked with. She's an MD researcher at Columbia with a specific interest in rare disease patients. And so we've worked with her on a number of projects. Um, she introduced us to you, and we had a great conversation. Uh, and it really introducing us to the world of SEPBP1 disorder and that started the ball rolling in terms of, of getting us thinking about what would be a great model that you could go away with that would really accelerate research into SETBP1. And in parallel, we also set up um, discussions with um, other foundations involved in SETBP1, specifically the Sinsel Gideon Syndrome Foundation. So we were essentially generating both sets of mutations at the same time, but we've maintained that, that great relationship both on the disorder side as well as the gain of function side um, uh, since 2018. So in two years, we've, we've completed making the mass models that we set out to do, and we're excited about what the next steps are gonna be. The notion was, um, and as a geneticist, I, I inherently believe this, that in order to study what makes us who we are and where, how we work, we have to study um, processes that may um, that generate errors. And these errors come about through DNA replication, um, various mutations that can arise spontaneously. And these tell us things about ourselves. SETBP1 is a very important protein, which is involved, it's a DNA binding protein, and it's involved in a neuronal development. It's expressed in other cells of the body, but it's really important in neurons and for neural development. And what we know from the work of, of, of um, clinician researchers and from the direct experiences of parents who have set BP1 disorder children is the effect that that has. So now we're looking at taking genetics to yet another level, developing tools to fix the anomalies. We know what the anomalies are. We can look at drugs. We can look at molecular mechanisms. We can look at new genetic therapies as all as options. And now we can use knowledge of what the trait is to figure out how well we're fixing it. Rare diseases by definition um, occur infrequently. And um, typically, um, awareness of the rare disease comes about through the specific physician that, that you first interact with. If the physician is a researcher and they have the ability to explore the field and to figure out what others have done, then the knowledge about that disease and its symptoms increases. Um, but Often what we find is that rare diseases are not confined to the US, they're not confined to any country or any locale, they're global. So a rare disease that's occurring within the US may be actually more common in other countries, but it's just that there's, there's no um, connection that, that takes a, a UK or a US physician and connects them to a physician in Africa, say. So what, what a mouse model does is it takes a rare disease and it makes it common. So we, we can develop a mouse model that if our studies show that it accurately reflects the array of symptoms and phenotypes which are found in the clinical population, now anybody can order that mouse strain anywhere in the world, any, any researcher. And that means that now your ability to work with a mammalian system that manifests the consequences of that genetic base change is available to any PhD student, any postdoc, any um, uh, researcher uh, globally. Our model inherently is a collaborative exercise. We want to make it available without license restrictions so that the entire community will benefit. So we are uh, researchers first. Uh, we also, as a nonprofit, our mission is to try to understand the genetic basis of disease. We really believe that we're on a path that's going to take care of, of, of a lot of these things that we just are beginning to understand now. 
understanding, um, you know, generating a mouse model is, is the beginning of the step. Um, we can take that mouse, we first of all have to prove that the mouse is a good surrogate for humans for that particular disease, for that particular trait. Once we've confirmed that, we then want to make sure that we statistically measure all of the things in the mouse which is different from a mouse which is un uh, uh, sort of un unmutated, if you like, the wild type mouse. And that gives us a set of baseline data points that when we try drug therapies, when we try genetic therapies, we can quantitate how well we're fixing things. You can, you can investigate side effects, negative consequences of various treatments, and you could evaluate the positive consequences. And then we, we, we talk to clinician researchers and say, here's our data set. We published it, we've made it available to all of the research community in, in the world. You know, what do you think you can do with it? And that's when pharmaceutical industry starts getting involved because now they're not guessing on how to fix things. They have a, a template that has been written by researchers that have used the mammalian system like the mouse, which is highly homologous to the human system. Um, and they can say, okay, this worked in the mouth. Let's, let's try some phase one trials here in humans. Let's move that to phase two and, and let's constantly evaluate success or, or failure based on the measurements which have been obtained in the mouse. So I think it is a very good time to, to be thinking about how science today is really moving from the, the bench to the bedside. It's just another tool that we're giving you in the arsenal. Mouse genetics is going to be one way in which you can, you can approach um, how to take care of, of, of the children that are impacted.